Every day brings new opportunities in my work at the Trump Organization. We're opening a project in Rio de Janeiro, one in Vancouver, an iconic project on Pennsylvania Avenue in Washington, D.C. Do you have a favorite part? The design and construction. I, I actually love it all. Real estate is, is my first passion. I mean, I, I grew up knowing that this was what I wanted to do. We'll leave that right there. Just like her father, Ivanka Trump built her own brand off of the house of cards that is the Trump org, which has been found liable for fraud already, which is why her appearance today testifying in the New York Attorney General civil fraud trial against the Trump organization marks something of a reversal of fortunes for the ex-president's oldest daughter. On the stand today, that confidence, the self-assured businesswoman image that she has spent years building disappeared in an instant. NBC News reports this about her testimony, quote, she smiles and speaks softly, responding politely, but has started to repeat the phrase, quote, I don't recall, in response to documents being shown to her, including letters and emails she wrote herself. Ivanka Trump appeared today not as a co-defendant, but as a witness. She was removed as a defendant back in June, but prosecutors insist she is a critical player in what they allege was a years-long pattern of fraud and deceit. Here's Attorney General Tish James. Ivanka Trump secured and negotiated loans um, to obtain favorable terms based on fraudulent statements of financial condition. Um, and she will attempt today to distance herself from the company. But unfortunately, the facts will reveal that, in fact, that she was very much involved. You cannot hide from the truth, and the facts will belie um, the truth and, and the evidence. Meanwhile, Trump's attorneys sought to limit Ivanka's testimony. Once again, from NBC News, quote, Trump lawyer Chris Keis said questions about Ivanka Trump's involvement in a deal to convert the old post office in Washington, D.C. into a hotel were irrelevant because of statute of limitation issues and noted the government agency involved in the talks was happy with it. Quote, they were thrilled with the renovation and it was a world class facility, Keis said. Quote, you're starting to sound like your client, Judge Ngoron replied. New York Times reporter Sue Craig will be joining us shortly um, at the table with her reporting on what went down in court today. But joining our conversation right now, former top prosecutor at the Department of Justice, now an MSNBC legal analyst, Andrew Weissman. Vanity Fair national correspondent, our friend Emily Jane Fox is back. She wrote the book, literally, on Ivanka Trump. Um, Emily, this was something that Ivanka Trump didn't want to happen, and we all know that because she said she um, had child care issues, which I'm always sympathetic to. Uh, the court, though, the judge did didn't buy it, and there she was. What was today like for Ivanka? I know this is so silly to even talk about on a broadcast like this and, and to someone like you, but I think that this is important to note. This came at an incredibly inopportune time for Ivanka Trump. She has spent much of the, few, the last few years essentially hybrid, hibernating in Miami. And over the last month or so, you really start to see her perhaps coming out of her shell a little bit. I know this is so silly to say, but she was invited to Kim Kardashian's birthday party in Los Angeles. And it was the first time as an Ivanka watcher that I saw her being included in something that was publicly social and publicly uh, highly watched. And so this moment of being reattached to her father, to her father's business practices on a stage for a, a, a fairly negative uh, trial that is happening in New York was not happening at the moment that she wanted it to happen. And I think what we saw today was quintessential Ivanka. She is either someone who is always in the room where it happens or never in the room where it happens when it depends what the it is. Is it something that is positive for her brand or something negative for her brand? And today, I think we saw a very reticent Ivanka Trump, someone who is very clearly trying to um, backtrack her involvement here because for this moment, it did not serve her to be the person who was the hotshot businesswoman set to take over the Trump organization had that worked out better for them. It's so interesting. I mean, and I think we always have to sort of look at the Trumps in terms of what the Trumps aspire to be. And, and I'm sure she... Um, I'm sure she aspired to be invited to things like that um, and being alongside Kim Kardashian probably did represent rubbing off some of the stain of being by her father's side for the presidency. I, I, I want to ask you what the ground truth is, though, about her involvement in the businesses. I know there's a lot of reporting and you've written about it as well, that she was the magic, you know, sauce that made the loans possible, that she wasn't just in the room. She made those lo loans happen. 
Well, as you saw in the documents that I think if her testimony wasn't illuminating, the documents certainly were. And I think what we saw was that she and her husband, Jared Kushner, were the people who introduced President Trump and the Trump Organization to the private banker who was so instrumental to all of this. So to erase her involvement at this is something that is nearly impossible, how hard as she might try on the stand today. It's so difficult to say, and I think that this is what we saw when she went to Washington at the same time. She was so integral to the president's business, to his demeanor, to his entire operation, that she was the one child who was brought to Washington, despite the fact that I'm sure her brothers would have loved the chance to go down as well. She was a, a real key to everything that he did, both um, in his political life and in his business life. She was truly a, a magician and someone who was perhaps if her father was chaotic and combustible, she was calm in the face of all this pressure. And I really think that that was a secret weapon for him. And uh, she always said that being underestimated was her superpower. And so I think she would go into this room and people would say, oh, this is a pretty face. This is someone who can't possibly know enough about business. And she would come very prepared with all of the financial information and all of the vision. And so she used the fact that she was um, his beautiful poised daughter as a, as a benefit for her and really tried to do all of the things that, that perhaps her father wasn't suited to do. Um, and that list gets longer by the day. Andrew Weissman, I mean, to, to Emily's reporting, I mean, she, she, she was very prepared and had all the financial information. That's some of what was presented to her on the witness stand, her own emails, her own preparation, if you will. Um, is it what happens if you look at something and say, ah, I don't remember that? Does that can you get away with that? Can you leave it at that? Well, I mean, I'm going to pick up on a theme that Emily touched on, which is sort of testimony, which was happening in terms of the questions and answers today, and the documents. Um, and so it, it really is two different stories. The state really didn't really further its case because they had the documents, and the documents don't lie. They are what they are. And in many ways, what they got out of today was by Ivanka constantly saying, I don't know, I don't recall, is she wasn't refuting anything there. It was so they have those documents without a witness saying, you know what, that's not accurate. That's not what happened. Or there's a different spin to that story. Um, so that's sort of I don't think they they sort of advanced their case too much, but they really didn't lose anything. And it's, that's sort of important that they have that piece. And as Emily said, she was integral to a lot of this. I think where she helped herself is one, obviously, by just doing the I don't recall. Now, you know, it is just to point out it is a long time ago. Um, she is out of this case as a defendant, in part because her main involvement happened prior to what's called the statute of limitations. So it does make it more plausible that she wouldn't remember specific things. Um, obviously, the judge will make a decision whether he thinks that she was feigning that kind of ignorance, particularly the key thing that she said she did not recall and was not involved in. It was very self-serving, which was the financial statements. That's where she could say, I was involved in putting deals together. I was involved in uh, introducing people to Deutsche Bank. But when it came to the critical documents, which the state has said were false, which the judge has found were false, these um, financial statements, she said, I did not have a role preparing those. So that was her effort to help herself. And I think she actually did a pretty good job of removing herself from that. But it still is the case that the documents that she's on don't lie, as Tish James said in the clip you played. Andrew, um, my colleague Lisa Rubin tweeted this, Ivanka's direct testimony is over and has been relatively placid, but that doesn't mean there weren't surprises. The AG's lawyer just showed Ivanka proof that despite making a personal guarantee to Deutsche Bank in connection with the old post office loan, Trump then entered into an agreement with his adult kids, through which each agreed to pay him money through their revocable trust to ensure he could meet that obligation. Um, I mean, I, 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 I don't know anything about how they move money around, but that sounds a little strange. Well, what's critical there, and this goes to documents that the state had, you know, whether or not she testified and they can prove up, is it was really came out loud and clear that Donald Trump's personal guarantee, his personal wealth 
was what drove this. In other words, Donald, um, Deutsche Bank may be able to say, you know, oh, we seemed happy enough with this, or the post office uh, people who entered into this deal seemed happy enough with it. But that's because the, the state will argue they didn't know at the time what was being presented to them was falsely inflated. Uh, and the critical part that the guarantee and the financial statements played, I think, is going to be a theme that you're going to hear repeatedly from the state, which, by the way, the state rested today. So their case is over, subject to their one caveat was the ability to recall uh, Mr. Weisselberg. But now it is going to be on Donald Trump and the other defendants. And, it, you know, what remains to be seen, whether they will have some defense to uh, the other causes of action that are being tried here.